go. Good evening. This way. You can go ahead. Give me a good evening. All right. Good evening. All right. Let's all get a songbook and turn to song number 538, please. 538. We'll sing the first and fourth verse. My hope is built on nothing less. Take a look around and see who is not here and make a note and I don't know what we do nowadays. We don't send letters and your cards anymore, but maybe we could uh, uh, call or text or something like that or whatever that face thing is you guys use, you know. Maybe we could do that, you know. Uh, I, I know I'm on a soapbox, but it's just a habit coming here. You guys do great, you know. So it's just a habit, you know, and just you get it, you get into the habit, and it's a good habit, you know. So do so. If we get everybody back in the habit, it'd be great. Five thirty-eight. Let's all sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid. Stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. You ready? No, I want to tell. I want to tell them about that song. All right, that was Dell. You guys know Dell, right? That was the second song he taught me. So there you go. So I really didn't have to have my eyeballs for that one. So there you go. So, uh, the invitation song will be song number. Nine. You know it's going to be in the nines. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. <clears throat> well, good evening. We do appreciate you being here. Um, Brother Russ called me late this afternoon and said that uh, this morning, uh, getting out of his truck, he twisted his knee. And uh, he said, well, you know, he thought as, as the day rolled on, he'd get better and better. Well, it began to swell about dinner time, he said, and didn't get better and better. It got worse and worse. So uh, he said his pain level was pretty high and that he needed to get in the recliner and try to get that thing above his heart because he could feel that heartbeat every time uh, it, it beat in his, in his knee there. So he said he called the... Uh, what do you call that? Sports medicine place. Couldn't see him until about a week from t tomorrow, I believe. So you know how that goes these days. But anyway, he said uh, that if I'd cover for him, he'd appreciate it. And I told him I would certainly would. All right, let me uh, have you turn to 2 Timothy. If you've got your Bible, chapter 4. I'm going to read a few verses there. That's 2 Timothy, chapter 4. We're going to begin verse 1 there. And this is, you're going to see a theme develop here. And Paul is going to talk a little bit about uh, his letter to Timothy there. That he, he's going to have a, a goal in mind. <clears throat> this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning again, verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn us and be a turned aside to faults. <clears throat> Let me see, I didn't read all that. Turned aside to fables, thank you. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions, do the work. On the average, on the evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am all I am all 
already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me in the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who loved his appearing. I said Paul had a, a goal in mind, and his message for them was to preach the word, to be instant in season, out of season, to be ready. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, I was, was traveling, and uh, I had uh, three meetings that day, <clears throat> so I had set my GPS as a navigation system, right, for your phone. Now, they're really easy. Many years ago, when I began to, uh, to work as a salesman for the, the church view company, we would have to write down turn-by-turn turn directions to get somebody to a, uh, to a location, right? So you'd have a, a sheet written out there, and it would be directions to the church. You'd start on 59 South, and you'd go wherever you were going, and get off at this exit. You had to know how many miles you went before you turned, and you turned at this four-way stop or whatnot. But now, that, that's pretty easy. You have a handheld computer that you carry around with you everywhere, and it has a, a GPS what is a GPS? Well, that is a global positioning satellite. And it can tell you where you are. And when you put in an address of where you need to go, it can tell you exactly how to get there. Now, there's some things that don't always know, that don't know when roads are closed or bridges are out and things like that. So you have sometimes that you have to uh, navigate around those things. So I'm gonna ask the simple question. What do you have your GPS destination set to? Everybody has a destination in mind, right? So our destination needs to be heaven. Now, what do we as we navigate through life use as our global positioning satellite? Well, we better use the word. We better use the word. Can we train our conscience to be our guide? Certainly. How do we do that? Following the Spirit. What did uh, the lesson on Sunday evening was talking about? Walking in the Spirit. How do we follow that? Well, that's the, that's the Word. Following the Word. So, we all are in a, in a journey, if you will. <clears throat> what did Paul say here in 2 Timothy chapter 4? He said, he's finished. He's at the end of his journey, and he knows what his destination is. What is it that's laid up for him? A crown of righteousness. And not for him only, but for who? Everybody who loves his appearing. Right? What is your GPS destination set to? On that day, I had three different meetings. I had to go to three different places. I had a meeting in, it was funny that day. I, I told Angie, I always tell Angie where I'm going because if she gets a phone call, she can put me on somebody else really quick. Only problem with Angie is that she's a little bit geographically challenged. So one day I was in Decatur and she said, hey, I got a call from this guy in Athens. Can you see him? I said, yeah, that's pretty close. I can probably manage that. I called him. He's in Athens, Tennessee. <laughs> so it didn't work out real well that day. But uh, anyway, that particular day I'm going to have a meeting in Gadsden. I have a meeting in Gardendale and I have a meeting in Gordo. Well, I, so, I told her, I said, well, if somebody calls and letting their town don't start with a G, I can't go today. <laughs> But uh, anyway, talking back to the, the message at hand there, what is your destination? And what, is, what are you using for your guide? Because we've talked all the time about this Bible being a road map for us. Yes, it may not be a global positioning satellite for you, but if you train your conscience the right way by studying the Word of God, it can be. Your conscience can be that guide that will keep you on track. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, keeping your eyes on the cross. And don't lose sight of that. Paul was at the end of his journey here. We're not. We still got a ways to go. But keep your eye on that prize, that crown of righteousness that can be all of ours. Thank you. 911. Bring Christ your broken life so marred by sin.
iniquities remember no more blessed savior of us all almighty friend his presence shall be ours unto the end without him life would be how dark how drear but with him morning breaks and heaven is near we're pre going to prepare to go to our classes before we do we'll go to god in prayer but i want to say one thing Sometimes preachers or people that get up here repeat themselves. Fifteen years ago, I heard this speaker here say the exact same lesson, exact almost word for word, except there was no GPS back then. He had a flip phone on the side, and it was like cool because he was like the only one really had one back then, 15 years ago. And I don't know if you remember, but it was up in uh, Eider. At a class for a, uh, we did a, 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 a VBS that we did that, right? And I go like, well, I gotta steal that. I, re I gotta remember that. That's pretty good. You know, that, that map thing. I, about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he did. He had a, he had a map there, and he was showing it out like that. <laughs> yeah. So that goes to show just how old he is. All right. All right. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you so very, very much for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Father, for for blessing us, and, and you bless us so much that we, we, we really thank you for it. We thank you for this day, the beautiful day that you've given us. We had rain last night, and uh, we needed it, and we thank you for it. We thank you, Father, for the food that we eat, for every bit of it comes from you. Without, the, without you, there'd be no food, and we thank you for that. We can't count all our blessings, but we want to thank you for them. And we thank you, Father, for your word, your roadmap. For with it, we are not lost. We are on the track to you. Be with us now as we go to our classes. For we pray in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I forgot to sing the final song, didn't I? You did. Yes. I did. You did all right. sing that, too. All right. All right. Yeah. What was that? You got an album. Oh. Who does that? Just uh, loved it all the way around. We'll get another song in here just a second. Uh, I heard from uh, from Donna and the reminder out there that Jenny did well with her surgery today. Uh, so that's good. She's recovering at home from her knee surgery. And she was very excited about that. So a good deal for, for that. Um, I did mention to, to Russ, he said Jill was making some slow improvements. Uh, so uh, remember her, continue to remember her as well as, um, as of course, Russ dealing with that, uh, the knee, twisting his knee. So um, are there others that uh, I may not know about? You know those that are normally on a prayer <clears throat> Betty McLaughlin has a co-worker that had a, um, a two-year-old, uh, is that a grandson, I believe it was? I think so, that uh, was going to, I can't remember exactly what the... Uh, appendicitis. Had a, a ruptured appendix, thank you. Appendix, there you go. Yes, he had a ruptured appendix and that he was going to be coming, uh, having surgery, of course, emergency surgery, but he would have to come home with home health for six to eight weeks is what they, they Two told. Years old. Two years old. Uh, so please uh, remember him. I don't know that if we got a name for that young man, but uh, we'll try to do that. And, uh, and, and please remember that family in your prayers as well. Thank you. In what? I bet somebody knows that it's her birthday today. Yes, you make sure you tell them we said the happy birthday. Okay. Yeah. Yes, May 15th, we'll have our birthday celebration. It's the first time in a while we've had that. So I told you on Sunday, I said, if you've had a birthday in the last two years, we're going to celebrate on, on Sunday, May the 15th. And I bet all of you have. All right, anything else? Thank you. Yeah. I've been handed a song that's probably not in your books. Is that right? That's right. Okay. But I think you're going to know it. I want to be a worker for the Lord. The speaker tonight says it ties in with, this, with the class. So there we go. So see if you follow along. We'll sing the first and third verse. I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His holy word. I want to sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard. to be a worker 
grave. I want to trust in Jesus' power to save. All who will truly come shall find a happy home in the kingdom of the Lord. For I will work and I will pray in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. And I will work and I will pray and I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. Did they sing? And we did pray, right? We did pray. Yes. We did pray. We did that. All there right. you go. There we go. Dismissed to go to our classes. Thank you. <clears throat>